Hey folks, Quill18 here, and the people have spoken! We are going to do a Let's Play of Crusader Kings 2, The Republic, and I have decided I'm going to be playing as the Serene Doge, uh, Dominico the First of Venice. Uh, because he looks like a sweet old man, doesn't he? Um, yeah, I'm not going to customize anything, we're going to go right into there. So, this is an expansion that I'm actually really, really excited about. Um, I haven't played the Sword of Islam yet, I haven't played... Um, the, uh, the new uh, Byzantium expansion. I mean, I've got all that. I'm, you know, I'm addicted to these Paradox games, so I've got all the expansion packs. But I, uh, I haven't actually played a game as those, but the Republic I knew I had to play right away, and I started fiddling with it, and I said, oh my god, this is so much fun, I have to make a video for it. So, what has changed in this expansion? Um, well, you can play as these, these merchant republics, and these are people who are not feudal lords, they're not kings, princes, or dukes, or anything like that. Um, the way that their, their titles get passed on are very, very, very different. But what they are really good at doing is making money. Um, and so we are going to start, like I said, as the, uh, the serene doge of the, uh, the most serene republic of Venice here. And we're basically only going to have this one province, but what we can start to do is we can, if we go to the Republic Trade Zone, uh, we can build little training posts. And you see we've actually got some here in Reggio and another one here in, uh, I'm going to say Lecce. Man, my pronunciation is terrible. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have to play as, a, I don't know, England or something like that, although then I won't be able to pronounce any of the um, any of the province names. Um, and, oh, we also have uh, Split over here. So, the great merchant republics are governed by major families, five major families. In particular, in here in Venice, we have the Contarini family, which is what we are. We are part of that dynasty. The Falerio, the Ziani, the Dandolo, and the Morosini. Um, and those five families will constantly vie for control over the Merchant Republic. Now, whenever the current leader, the current Doge, dies, there's an election among all these members, and whoever wins gets to govern the Republic for life. Um, and how the election happens is based on this respect. So you can see that my heir is going to be Jacopo Contarini, and he's my eldest son. Um, by default, it, the succession really doesn't work the same way at all. It's based on this sort of respect, uh, which is based on all sorts of different uh, values. Uh, and one of the major factors is age, because with age comes wisdom, or so is the idea. So um, most of the people who are going to be elected to be the Doge are actually going to be quite old. Uh, and um, that means there's actually a potential, in fact, it's actually quite likely that at some point we will lose the election and no longer be the leader of Venice. But that's okay, we just have to wait until the elected leader dies, and since everyone starts off so old, it probably won't uh, take that long, and then we'll get another shot. Meanwhile, we'll be increasing our prestige, we'll get older, of course, and as we get more money, we can put more money into the campaign fund. So what's really interesting is that I can lose, right now I have control over Venice, um, just as if I were the... Um, you know, a count somewhere, or a duke, or anything like that. Uh, I've got holdings, they can be upgraded, all those sorts of things, right? Here's Venezia, the, actually, the actual county capital. Uh, but the big difference is that I also have, my family has an additional holding that is not represented physically on the map. Um, in fact, arguably, it's not even, it doesn't even represent a single location. It represents a collection of sort of all of my family property. And that's over here, the House Contarini, Contarini, Holding, just all of our holdings all put together. Um, and uh, apparently we can change the look of it. Oh no, that's the next holding in, in my domain. Yeah, that's interesting. Alright, that doesn't actually work very well there. Um, so, oh, it might, if I had more trading posts, maybe it would let me cycle between there. I'm not sure. So, no matter what happens, I get to keep this. So, one of the big questions that is going to pose itself is. Where are we going to spend the money that we get to upgrade? Because it would make a lot of sense, for example, to build a fortified vault, right? For extra tax income, which is very, very valuable. 200 bucks for extra tax income. Now, it does take like three years to build, um, but it, it's worth quite a bit. On the other hand, what I can do also is on these provinces here, is in addition to the, <coughs> excuse me, the normal holdings, there is a trade tab. And here I can build trading posts in these different provinces. And that is a trading post that is going to be part of the Merchant Republic of Venice, but specifically under control of my family. 
Um, that being said, especially if I lose control of, over the Republic, there's a good chance that I might lose some of my holdings as well, uh, depending on the sort of um, intrigue machinations that uh, my opponents put in. Uh, so I, I'm, there's going to be a bit of a balance between expanding our trading posts and even improving them, which you can see if I go to back to Venice and I click on the trading post we have there. Um, I can upgrade these here uh, and they produce a lot of trade for 100 gold I get to increase the trade value of the trading post by 10 or 100 gold I can increase the tax income by one uh, I'm not 100% sure that I get the entire trade value although I feel that I I, I think I do um, yeah because there if I go to the Republic I can see how much it's worth here now the catch is that the income that I make is actually spread out amongst my entire family. Well, I think the closely related males of my family. I'm not sure if the females get it or not. Um, but everyone gets paid. So all my sons, for example, and if they have children, uh, and in fact they do, I think they actually get a little bit of income as well. I'm not sure if that's reported anywhere that I can see. It may, it may not. I, I'm not sure. So the bigger your family, obviously the bigger your family, the the I don't know, more secure your succession is because you're going to have lots of spares, right? Your heirs and your spares. Uh, but the more your money gets subdivided. I mean, I will get most of it as the leader, but not all of it. That being said, you know, they hopefully that my, uh, my family will put things to good use. Um, actually, the very first thing I want to do is um, because I've got my heir here, I Jacopo, um, I would like him to have more prestige, which will increase the amount of respect that he has, not to mention a little bit of money. Now, luckily, as the most serene doge of the Republic of Venice, I can grant him some honorary titles, and I will make him... I think these are all the same. Opinion... Uh, the opinion changes a little. The salary is actually different. The prestige is all the same. Ah, you can have three state inquisitors, and only one high admiral, one high judge. You can also designate an heir. So by default, it'll be the person, my heir will be the person in my family, I believe, um, who has the most respect, which will, generally speaking, be my oldest heir. My oh, Out of all my heirs, it'll be the oldest uh, most of the time. Um, so a lot of times, you know, it's going to go from, you know, to my old eldest son. So it's going to feel a lot like a normal succession system. Um, but it doesn't actually work that way. Um, so, and if I wanted to, I could designate a specific heir. For example, if I'm looking at my sons here, and it turns out that Yoko is crap. Um, well, his intrigue sucks, which is unfortunate. His learning's good, diplomacy. Stewardship actually sucks quite a bit. Um, but I suspect that's not going to be all that different. Wow. Wow! Andrea, you actually would be pretty freaking tempting. So I can make him my designated heir, and then he would show up on the voting block, but the fact that he's not there means that he's got slightly less respect. Uh, maybe... can I see there... The prestige is currently at zero. Zero, so it doesn't, that doesn't really make a difference. It's the age. He's five years older than Andrea, and that's why um, that's why Iokopo is currently the, the next person. But I could go to Andrea and just give him a title and let him accumulate a little bit of prestige and that might send him over the top. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but the problem is I do lose five years of seniority so that when the next election comes up, it's going to be that much harder for me to win. Um, you can also throw money into the campaign for the election and, you know, help encourage things that way. I think I'm just going to stick with Yoko. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them both a title. Uh, so I'm going to give Yoko... Yo... Yokopo. Yeah. I'm going to make him the High Admiral. Boom. It'll also make him like me more, which I'm not super concerned about, although maybe the High Intrigue guy should be a little more... Uh, a little bit more worried. So, and I'm going to make him... the High Judge. That way they can both start accumulating some prestige, plus the title comes with uh, with a salary, and that's good, and we want more money in the family rather than giving it to, to outsiders. Then we've got Carlo over here who's just getting screwed. He's got a nice sort of rounded base of, of stats in general. But um, well, Let's take a look at what our various... So right now, title loss and succession. We will lose um, the most serene Republic of Venice and the Grand City of Venice, which is just... I mean, Venice is the province... Um, and, or, I don't know, 
to, it's the whole title, right? Which only covers the province. And furthermore, Venezia is the county capital. So I will lose both of those on succession because I'm not going to win the election right now. So that's that, that's okay. We can expect that. We can hopefully correct that pretty quickly. Again, hopefully we'll get a little bit, a little bit of prestige in our sun and we can throw some money into the campaign fund um, if that comes up. So let's, let's not worry about it for now. I can also apparently create a title for the Duchy of Venice. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to do for me. Um, technically, it would make me a duke, I think, maybe. thing is, I don't think you can actually have holdings um, in both the Republic and as a feudal lord. For example, if I were to marry, and I do have to find a wife, if I were to marry someone with a title or a claim, and then we had a son or something like that, and he inherited that title, he actually can't inherit both the claim to the, the Republic and the claim to a feudal title. Um, the things will get split up, so if we have more than one kid, usually, like, uh, the oldest will get, I don't know, the feudal titles, and then the second oldest will become the, uh, the claimant to the Republic. Um, there's just no mixing and matching, it's forbidden by law. Um, so I'm not sure what the advantage is to creating that title or not. We might do it, we might not. Hopefully we'd still get the prestige, so there's an argument that we could convert gold into prestige, but I think I'd rather convert gold into more gold. Um, and we do, we are unmarried, so we've got a sort of desire here to, um, to become married. In fact, can we set as an ambition? No, we cannot. Um, we'll get to that shortly. We're gonna see if we can arrange marriage. Now, one of the things, uh, oh, our intrigue's pretty good. And in fact, I would like a little bit more because I have discovered that you can steal a lot of these trading posts that right now we don't own. We can steal them pretty damn effectively from people with a little bit of prestige. Um, it might come and bite us in the ass later, but we'll see what we can do. Now, the big problem is that if we marry anyone who is... Um, intrigue, we want. Yeah, lots of intrigue. If we marry anyone who is a noble, we actually have to pay a big bride price for that because we are we are lowborn, basically, or lowish born. Um, and the thing is, I haven't figured out well, how to uh, how to identify that because um, this just shows like who they're attached to their courtiers I mean if we uh, sort by actually it's not even rank maybe it would be rank I don't think so though because I think rank is is this skill I might be wrong um, you know you'll see you'll see when they say like princess or this or that so you know those people are like right out um, but some of these courtiers, this courtier might be the, the daughter of a mayor, or, or uh, an earl, or a count, rather, um, and therefore be inaccessible. Gluttonous, arbitrary, deceitful, and kind. Brilliant strategist is good. Gluttonous, does that reduce, um, oops, it reduces stewardship. Crap for stewardship, yeah. Well, she's at a zero. Um, hmm. Or we could go down a notch here. Rave, lustful. See, the problem with lustful is that I don't think I actually want any more kids. It's got a lot more diplomacy, which is nice. Marshall, which actually does help me because I get half the stats. I have no marshal. I don't know how much we're actually going to be doing in terms of war in here, other than maybe putting down a few rebellions here or there. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess we'll start with the uh, the lady on top and see what we can do here. Yeah, see, it's not going to work because she's part... If I ask for her again here, it didn't, it didn't populate, and if I ask for her, it's going to say, oh, she's so noble, she's the daughter of a mayor, it's going to cost that. And I haven't gotten around to figuring out exactly how to identify that. Um, I don't think it's the flags, although, as far as I can tell... No, see, even here. Because the flag is for the alliance. Um, curious. Now, one of the things that seems to work is if I go and click the find characters button and I do a women uh, not in prison not married um, what is ruler? This is if they are a ruler? So, yeah if they are a ruler can I just marry a mayor? probably not oh and she's a princess hey! well Air, all this. Hang on, let's take another look here. I mess over her. Now, see, this is the one I couldn't marry, and it says nothing about her. 
To me, there's no indication that this person is a noble woman at all. They're all just courtiers. Anyway, um, we definitely, like, not a ruler, let's say. Yes of our religion, yes of our culture. Well, you know what? We can be we can be flexible about culture. Um, we'll have to decide what we want to do there. Um, ideally an adult. And great house, this may make a difference. Although, I think some people can be part of a great house, but not actually be out of my bounds. I'm not sure. see what we can do. Um, arrange marriage. And if I said yes here. That's her, right? Oh, no. Let's try again. Oh, uh, is she too old? Oh, no. She's not too old. Um, I mean, she's older, but that doesn't bother my guy. My guy's like 150,000 years old. Um, see, she's part of a great house, technically. But she's not out of bounds. I, I just, I haven't figured it out. Uh, stewardship is good. No more diplomacy, which is a little sucks. She's paranoid, zealous, deceitful, cruel. She doesn't even like me very much. Maybe this is a bad sign. Maybe I should find someone with high espionage that doesn't hate me quite so badly. Ugh. Um. Why do you hate me so much? Attraction to gluttonous. Am I gluttonous? Am I attracted to people who are gluttonous? I don't know. Anyway, um, her stats are decent. I, I want the high intrigue, so that that's what I'm browsing for. Although, you know, if I just go down here, oh, see, Prince, Princess of Hungary. There's no way I can marry her. Um, just wondering, if I went down, would I find someone with better rounded skills? Not entirely. Alright, we're, we're just gonna have to go for this, because what the hell. Boom. So, while well, that's ticking away, what else do we got? We need to pick an ambition. So, um, our choices right now are amass wealth, become a paragon of virtue, improve martial ability, improve stewardship, and improve learning. Now, doing the amass wealth thing is actually pretty strong, generally speaking, because all you have to do is hit 500, you get plus one stewardship, which increases your ability to make money, and then you decide to amass wealth over and over and over again. The problem is, he's, he's actually, like, fairly old, so I'm not sure that we're really going to be able to do the amass wealth in time. Like, I, I don't know. He's, he's only 58. I mean, he, he can easily live until he's 90. Um, or more. I, I'm not sure what the age limit is in this game. Um, but I'm not confident with that, and I'd rather actually spend some of the money to inc increase some of my holdings. So what I think I'd like to do is boost one of my stats that suck. Uh, for example, stewardship, uh, which is pretty important. It's only a 3 right now. If I do this, he'll get some act he'll get some random events from time to time that will increase his stewardship, and I think there's some good value in doing that. And the prestige boost wouldn't hurt necessarily, so I'm going to go in that direction. It might not be great, but I think it's okay. Um, the Paragon of Virtue might be possible, but I don't know. I'm going I'm going to go with this. Yep, since uh, my stewardship is lower than eight, I can choose to pursue that. Uh, I have an unmarried heir. Yokopo is not married, and actually I should have gone hunting for a wife for him first. Um, so, let's go back to this, and let's find someone. So with him, and he does have kids. Did his wife die? It doesn't say. So, it wouldn't hurt for him to have another couple of kids, so I guess I'll give him someone younger. Um, I still like to prioritize that, but Man, she's got a lot of shitty-ass traits. They all do. Um, wow. Hedwig here has a lot of half-decent traits. Um, oh, I like this. 17. Pretty high numbers all over the place. Not much learning. Um, gregarious, ambitious, charitable, slothful. Let's see if we can pull this off. 
Um, I would like to arrange marriage. Not with me, but with my son. Actually, does he have a desire? What I should actually do is, well, uh, I'm gonna get him hooked up right away because I'm worried that some of the uh, the half decent people might get picked up a little too quickly. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get him started, uh, but then for everyone else, I'm gonna wait until they get the uh, the ambition. All right, I can't see it in this list either. I'm gonna have to look it up in uh, like search my vassals men who are unmarried. Right, and then I'm going to look for the ambition to get married, and I'm going to marry them off and really get a high boost in our relationship. So I'm going to unpause it, let things go kind of slowly here, let some of these pop-ups resolve themselves in a moment, as soon as the uh, the requests go through. Um, we've gotten married, so we can either take prestige or we can take gold, and I'm going to take gold because we need gold to build our economy. Like, it's going to be all about that. Uh, excellent, my son's going to... Or I'm gonna get married to uh, Gontroda. Woo so now we're married. Hey, that's excellent. Uh, let's take a quick look at our council. Okay. Yes, my son will get married. Now my spy master. Spy master is the only place where you can assign your wife to a role. So I'm gonna go and do that because she has excellent espionage. So it's gonna tick him off a little bit, which is a little sketchy because he does have some espionage, but hopefully he'll still like me. Boom. Um, so that improves our relationship a little bit. Plus, is there anything else I could do? Go ahead, plot the I can just kill her. But I don't think that'll work too well. Um, I can give her some money to make her like me a little bit more. I don't know. I think we're fine for now. There's no there's no need to rush that. Uh, what else am I counsel? I think other than that, they're going to be set to the... Um, to the most appropriate people. Yeah. Until I start expanding my court and whatnot. Alright. Um, yeah, we can keep things going here. Oh, I need to assign my people to things. Okay. So, one of the things, uh, I'm going to be trying to expand my my trade routes. And I'm going to start off really close to Venice itself. I, I don't know. Maybe it makes more sense to go further away. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. Uh, but one thing that matters is the tax income of a county. The trade income is based on the tax income. So I'm going to try to pick out a pretty high uh, value site, which right now... Uh, see, Bari's pretty high too. Um, it's a little far, but it might be okay. It's right next to these guys, which is kind of interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do, maybe... Yeah, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deploy my Chancellor to Bari to improve relations because the price of setting up a trade route... Oh, someone's already constructing. God damn it. And I'm not going to be able to, like, replace him right away. Son of a bitch. Ah. Anyway, I was going to say the price of setting up a trade route or a trading post is based on the... partially based on our relationship. So, and also distance. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna put one here in Padua because it's got a slightly higher income, so it should result in more money. Uh, but I need more money for that in general. Still, we're gonna make a fairly decent amount from our holdings because we do have the tax base uh, here in Venice already. Um, plus, I think that our our house yeah has a base tax rate of 11 as well, just by itself. So that's pretty strong. And yeah, we would like to build a fortified vault probably pretty quickly. Now, so it's, the big toss-up is. Um, the Fortified Vault is a great investment because it's with you forever and ever and ever. Uh, but the Trading Posts, I think, make more money, but the Trading Posts are at risk. Still, I think I'll build a few Trading Posts to start off with. And maybe, you know, if I lose the, uh, the, the, my position, um, then I will, uh, I will look into improving my holdings. So as, uh, a Republic, I find that the first few turns, there's not a whole, or the first few turns, the first little while, there's not a whole lot for me to do. There's going to be little skirmishes that happen all over the place. Uh, where do I get the independent realms? Boom. Um, little skirmishes happen all over the place around me, but I'm just one province, one holding. Um, I, I can raise a half-decent military, and because I have a lot of money, there's also a lot I can do with mercenaries. Um, you know, if things start to happen. 
but I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of that, so a lot of the time can pass pretty fast. Andrea is concerned that he's not married. Ah, uh, yes, I will find you something. I will find you someone. Um, there we go. See, now he's got an ambition. Um, oh, I have that set to no. That's a problem. I think I wanted any. That's awkward. All right, so now I see everyone in my realm who wants to be married, which is cool and convenient. Anyway, uh, first, let's go browsing for women outside of the realm. I want to bring more people in. Um, so, I don't, I don't know what to prioritize for the women, um, especially for my second son. Maybe we'll just give him stewardship. We'll give him the ability to make some money. Uh, courture wants to get married and everything so let's see if i can get her i guess i could have done it from here right arrange marriage um all right that works mm. she's got a lot of stats actually she's pretty damn good all right let's send a request um, you know, we can keep looking for high stewardship people, or maybe actually people who like me. That's a good question. I, because I, I want to marry off some more people in my realm who want, um, who are looking for brides. And I suppose at this point, I'll, I should just bring in, because I won't care about their stats so much, I'll just bring in the people who like me the most and just try to encourage that in here as much as possible. So we'll arrange a marriage. Uh, this is actually someone from Venice. So no, I want to bring people up from outside. There we go. Someone from Portugal. Um, arrange marriage with someone. Well, he's already queued up. So let's grab uh, uh, Benvenuto, who wants to get married. Who only he likes me enough at a 32, but not tons, right? So if we can set that up, excellent. That'll make him like us a little more. And then we'll grab. Uh, I mean, they're older, but I don't care. Uh, arrange marriage because Adone wants to get married as well. So, he's just a courtier, he's not part of my direct family, so we'll send that off. Boom, get all those requests working. Hopefully make people happy because we fulfilled their desire. I accept, I accept. Lovely, I'm just gonna play matchmaker. It's gonna be fantastic. So more people have arrived in my court, hooray. We've got a fair amount of money here. We're just waiting for a tiny little bit more. Um, I mean, it can be bad to spend 100% of our money, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, Respect-wise, we're still... My wife was captivated by the grace and strength of hunting birds and begged me for a bird. I can lose some gold, make her like me more, which I think is going to be important, since um, because her intrigue is so high, I don't want her to start assassinating me, um, and she's my spy master and everything like that, it would work very, very well. Ooh, I can spend more or less. You know what? Assuming this is a permanent boost, and I'm not sure that it is, I'm going to go ahead and spend all the money. I think it's going to be a pretty solid investment unless I die right away. Um, deeply in love. Yeah, she's deeply in love with me. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That, that, is, that is quite handy, actually. Um, yeah, so I did... Oh, I got enough now. So let's, um, let's start building this trading post. Doesn't take all that long to do. Expand out there. Lots of wars going on. So the wars, <coughs> excuse me, are going to be relevant. Uh, one thing that some people may wonder is, can people invade and take over your trading posts? And yes, they can. They can be say siege like other things. Um, but generally, I think only in trade wars. Um, it's also possible for a ruler in a nation. Like so, here I'm building this, and I'm building this inside of the well, the Holy Roman Empire. Um, this is part of the Kingdom of Italy. So all these things, right? So the people there can decide to throw me out. This duke could throw me out. All these things. Mission to Bari succeeded. Great. So we're, we're better friends over there, but that's not really going to help me much right now. Can I move him yet? I can. Whoa, we're going to move you aside. It's actually the first time I've seen this pop up. Um, let's, uh... Family trade zones. Yeah, so we have control over this trade zone, which is good, because it gives us a multiplier. And I think the more things we have in one trade zone, the better. So I'm just going to try to dominate this entire bay, actually. Um, and I'll just, uh, you know what, I'll go to, to the other side here. No, Here, 27 is a little higher. 
All right, right over here, assuming there's no trading post, great. So this is gonna be in uh, Veglia. We're gonna send our, um, our steward over there. So the Great Ball, Patrician Vitali of Feliero, which is one of my rivals, uh, will soon be hosting Great Ball in his family palace and every Patrician family in the Republic has been invited, except for yours? <gasps> your dynasty's relation with the Falerio family has been tense of late and you're competing with them in several important markets. The decision not to invite Contarini members to the ball can only be seen as a grave insult. As you sit brooding in the chambers of your own palace, you wonder how to tackle the situation. Will you turn up the ball anyway, pretending that there's been some mistake, or you'll turn the other cheek and accept this affront to Contarini honor? Wow, the funny thing is this guy is like temperate and kind and humble. He's like actually a super nice guy that everyone loves, but apparently we're not going to be in a good place. So, um, this is really interesting because what they did introduce in this game are like humongous family feuds, like the 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 uh, Capulets and Montagues, right? The Romeo and Juliet thing. These two families who absolutely hate each other, like for cr generations and generations and generations. I could lose 60 prestige. I could literally lose all my prestige or say, F this guy. So you know I'm going to say F this guy. Boom. And then we're going to pause and end this episode. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.